Republic of Ireland is an island nation in northwestern Europe on the North Atlantic Ocean. From Spain, we flew to the capital and largest city of Dublin and took a three-hour bus to County Roscommon in Western Ireland. A Vic's brother picked us up so we could spend the holidays with them in his wife's hometown of Elfen. Elfen is a small farming community of fewer than 600 people. To us, it's quintessential Ireland with country roads, stone walls and hedgerows, rolling green fields, beautiful lakes, and plenty of livestock. The town itself is very small, with one main street and no stoplights or roundabouts. The church is the busiest building in town and pretty much the only large building open during COVID. Many businesses were struggling while we were there, and several didn't survive the last two years. Elfen's history is more significant than its size suggests seat of one of the first Christian dioceses in Ireland from the year 1118 through the 1950s. The former bishop's palace and grounds are on the east side of town. The restored early 18th century windmill, now a park and museum, was closed but still picturesque to look at. The old bishop's grammar school counts a Vic's sister-in-law and the father of poet and playwright Oscar Wilde among its many alumni. The ornamental cross of Kong, likely crafted in Elfen and now housed in the National Museum in Dublin, was commissioned and donated to the diocese in the 12th century by the High King of Ireland. Elfen, meaning Fionn's Rock or the Rock of the Clear Spring, believed to be blessed by St. Patrick in the year 440, gives the town its name. Modern Church of St. Patrick, missing its expository signage, is a successor to the original Elfen Cathedral. The cathedral ruins visible today are from the 18th century Protestant Church of Ireland Cathedral, but the site dates back to the first church consecrated here by St. Patrick. Patrick also ordained the first Bishop of Elfen, Asicus, now the town's patron saint. Aside from the remains of the altar, the site also has a Protestant graveyard and a separate Catholic graveyard, which has markers from as far back as the sixth century. County Roscommon is part of the province of Connacht, which was a Gaelic kingdom until the 13th century. And the history of the area extends back far beyond St. Patrick to at least several centuries BCE. The kings and queens of Connacht ruled from Rathcrohan, less than 10 kilometers from Elfen. Rathcrohan Mound was believed to be the royal palace of Connacht and frequently of the High King of all Ireland. One of the most famous Connacht rulers was Queen Maeve, who ruled from about 50 BCE to 50 CE, and whose story became as much myth and legend as fact. Climbing up the grassy knoll, the top provides a commanding view of the entire area. You can also clearly see the notches facing sunrise and sunset, as seen in many other Celtic sites. While exploring the top, we were treated to a beautiful rainbow. The entirety of Rathcrohan encompasses over 500 hectares and 20 different sites, many of which are still on private land. One other public site is carved out of surrounding fields. Oyanagath commonly translated as the Cave of the Cats, is believed to be a thin place where the veil that separates our physical world from the spirit world is thinnest, especially on the night of October 31st. This natural fissure was sacred to the Irish Druids, 
who built a narrow stone-framed chamber to reinforce the entrance, to crawl through on hands and knees. October 31st is the festival of Samhain, the Celtic New Year, marking the annual harvest and the beginning of the dark period of the year. On this night, spirits would slip through the thin veil into our world. The origins of Samhain have been traced to this cave, where the spirit world could be contacted directly from deep inside. Outside the cave, great fires were built and costumes were worn to curry favor from the spirits and Celtic deities. Lights from the bonfire were carried home to guide the spirits of ancestors, and food, such as soul cakes, was left out for them. In the ninth century, Pope Gregory III, in an attempt to eliminate this pagan festival, created two holy days, All Saints Day on November 1 and All Souls Day on November 2. But many Irish kept Samhain alive and brought it to America where it eventually morphed into Halloween. After my brush with the veil, I worked my way back to the surface. Crawling up the muddy stones until I finally saw daylight again. And once again, we were greeted with a beautiful rainbow. It was peaceful staying with the Vic's brother and his wife. It was often just us and their two dogs while they were at work. Near to their home, they're fixing up a lake cottage for use as an Airbnb, and we helped them out on a few days. Sanding down some old chairs to get them ready to be repainted, and clearing around and pruning back some apple trees. One of our favorite nearby towns is Carrick-on-Shannon. Straddling the Shannon River, it's a wonderful place to walk around. The smallest chapel in Ireland was built there in 1887 to honor a local man's late wife. And one of our Irish nephews manages the landmark hotel. We now take the mugs he gave us everywhere that we go. The Shannon Blue Way Trail follows the river and passes through a beautiful park north of Carrick, letting you walk right over the water and the marshland. In the far north of County Roscommon, Kilronan Castle sits on a hill above Loch Mila. Like many large estates in Ireland, Ownership was granted by the English Crown for military service to the Tennyson family of Oxfordshire in the 17th century. By the 19th century, the Tennyson heir had become Earl of Kingston by marriage and owned over 17,000 acres in Roscommon alone. The Grand House, originally called Castle Tennyson, was built and expanded from 1820 through 1876. Prior to 1870, 97% of Irish farmers were tenants to English lords with very limited rights. The Great Irish Famine of the mid-19th century and agricultural depression through 1896 created immense pressure for land reform. Some progress was made by the UK Parliament and by World War I, half of Irish land was owned by the farmers themselves. Many sturdy cottages, like a Vic's brothers, were built during this time. Irish independence in 1922 tipped the scales, and by 1929, 97% of Irish farmers owned their land. The Tennysons, like most of the landed gentry, abandoned their castles during this time, and by 2004, the house had fallen into complete disrepair. The Irish hotelier Hanley Group 
completely restored and updated the castle, transforming it into the beautiful property we were lucky enough to stay in. The new name comes from the Gaelic Kilronan, meaning Ronan's Abbey, from a church that St. Ronan is said to have established here in the 6th century. We stayed at Kilronan to attend the wedding of our Irish nephew, who manages the landmark. Even though we're not family, we've always been treated like family and it was such an honor to be invited. The interior of Kilronan is gorgeous, especially for people like us who are suckers for castles. You really feel privileged staying there. And they solved the drafty old castle problem with modern heating systems. The castle grounds are just as beautiful with some wonderful walking trails that take you down through the woods, up to and along the lock, then back again toward the castle. The stay at Kilronan was truly a magical way to cap off our time in Roscommon.